And we are live. Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Global Citizens. My name is Kelvin and I am the show's host and I'm also its creator. So for those of you who just tuned in to the show for the very first time, Global Citizens is a webcast and a platform in order for individuals who have experienced a multicultural lifestyle to share their personal life in living and working in the foreign country. The reason being is that when you are visiting a country, yes, you are exposed to new culture. However, this culture is, well, you are just there for your holidays or for visit. And then a few after a while, you'll be back to your hometown or where you're from. Whereas if you are living in the country, you are there to expose to a new mindset. You need to adapt to how the locals think, how they react, how they speak. So as a result, it forms a certain connection and allows and well, you live a part of yourself in there. So my guest for today is Miss Lauren Wells. So Lauren is actually the founder and director of TCK Training. Uh, okay, so what is this about? Uh, TCK Training is actually a consultancy that where, where Lauren uses her personal experience and education in child development to support families who are adopting to a life as a global citizen. So without further ado, I will pass the platform to Lauren. So Lauren, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing well. How are you? Uh, physically fine, <laughs> mentally exhausted. <laughs> I've been I've been quarantined now for around three months, and well, it's not really. I'm not really a frequent drinker, but I've been sober for four months now. <laughs> so hooray! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I think. I hope. I hope though. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so Lauren, if you don't mind, maybe you can uh, share a little bit more about yourself. I hope I did justice for your introduction. Absolutely. Yeah, your introduction was great. And like you said, I'm the founder and director of TCK Training. I specialize in preventive TCK care. So looking at how we can prevent a lot of the challenges we know TCKs face as adults and help parents and organizations and sending agencies to be more equipped in preparing families well for life overseas. So that's what I do, and I do that in a variety of different ways. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, Lauren, so it's a customary for every TCK on their first on their appearance on the show mm -hmm. to answer this question, and mm -hmm. I am sorry you have to hate me for this. First off is, how do you define home, and what has been your anchor? Anchor as in what has kept you safe uh, oh, centered man. in your life? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, home has been a very fluid term in my life as most TCKs. And ever since I got married about seven, eight years ago, that's definitely Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's definitely been the definition of home is wherever my husband and I are, we create home and we allow that to be um, we allow that to be a home. And I always encourage families and having grown up a globally mobile life to be all in wherever you are. And so part of that is allowing yourself to be okay with calling wherever it is you are home, knowing that that could change and that it doesn't have to be home forever or it doesn't have to completely feel like home right now. Um, but wherever you are with your family, that's where home is. And that's, that's definitely how I would define it. So my family is my anchor. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, Lauren, do you mind elaborating us a bit? Like, how do you actually started being a TCK consultant? Because I think a lot of TCKs, uh, especially now, since the term is becoming more prevalent, will always look for, well, we finally know what is going on with our life. But the thing is, is that it's still a little bit of a roller coaster here and there. So one of my past guests, Winnie, who actually is the creator of Third Culture Chinese, where she created a fictional version of herself, and she, well, she faces issues that TCK face, mm -hmm. actually created a graphic that I really love, whereby she actually cut pieces of herself in the, in the form of mm -hmm. the country's nation. And after that, it's like she left her heart at a different part of the places that she grows up in. Yeah. So maybe you can elaborate a bit more on how you actually started doing this. Yeah, so I knew back in high school when I learned what a TCK was, I knew that I wanted to eventually work with families, but I didn't know what that would look like. And after graduating from university, I moved to Oregon and found an organization that I started working for that was doing pre-field training. 
for people who were moving overseas. And after volunteering for them for a while, they said, hey, would you be interested at all in creating a program for families with kids? Because we have families coming through and we just do daycare for the kids and it'd be nice if they had something. And I said, okay, well, if we're going to do a program, let's, let's make it a program that parallels your adult programs so that families can be sharing common language, learning the same things and going through this program together. So I developed back in 2014, their children and teens programs and really focused those on how we can best prepare kids for life in a new culture and learning culture and language became a really big part of that. And through doing all of that for several years, working with the kids and teens, and then later working with parents more specifically, I ended up hiring people to work with the kids and teens so that I could do more with the parents. Uh, I really started to see this need for preventive care that we were starting to see all of a sudden a lot of statistics coming out about the struggles that adult third culture kids have. And it was becoming really apparent as I was sending these families overseas that we needed to, to talk to the parents about these statistics, but not from a almost a devastating, there's nothing you can do about this. This is just what's going to happen perspective, but instead starting to think through, okay, what are some practical ways that you can be proactive about preventing your TCK from having severe anxiety and depression in adulthood? That's a serious issue. Let's look at that when you're going overseas with your five and six-year-old, instead of just hoping that you don't worry about it um, later down the road. So that's when I really started to get really serious about this idea of preventive care um, and I still work for the organization. It's called Culture Bound, doing pre-field training. Now I'm their director of training, so I direct all the training programs. And when that happened, I started TCK training specifically for this purpose of preventive TCK care. And it was becoming apparent that that was way bigger than culture and language acquisition. And it grew into its own thing, and it's a, it's been a, a very fun ride. But it it began slowly and very organically and then has turned into uh, what it is today and now i get to work with a lot of organizations and families and all sorts of different groups teaching about this idea of preventive care and how we can best equip parents to be proactive about how they raise their tck's thank you so much for saying that yeah <laughs> i actually will get to that a little bit uh okay yeah I think one of the difficulty for us growing up as a TCK, at least is that at that time, we do not yet understand the term. But the thing is, is that a lot of times is because a lot of our parents grew up in a monoculture or a single or a single country. So uh, as a result, they grow up only adapting a certain mindset of their environment, their neighborhood. So as a result, when they go to a new country, they maintain that life, they maintain that mindset. And well, uh, it depends on their personality on how fast they can adapt. But the thing is, is that they never realize that their kids do not follow what they wanted. It's not because, well, it's not because out of hatred. It's not because out of ungratefulness also, because I know a lot of TCK who actually had a lot of issue with their parents is because they always thought that they're being ungrateful of the privilege of the beautiful life that they actually have. It's not the case. It's just that because it doesn't mean that we're ungrateful, that we don't really know what is, well, we don't really feel the struggle. And mm -hmm. as a result, it becomes a lot of source of contention. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lauren, I believe you just recently or recently released or you are currently making a book. So do you mind talking a little bit more on that? Yeah, it was just published a couple of months ago. So it's available on Amazon. Thank you. <laughs> it's available on Amazon and Kindle. It's called Raising Up a Generation of Healthy Third Culture Kids. And it's just a practical guide for parents, for people who work with TCKs on that whole idea of how can we be practically preventive about the things that we're doing as we raise TCKs. And what you were just saying about how it can be really good and hard at the same time, that's exactly the point that I, I make at the very beginning of the book. I call the TCK life the ampersand life, you know, the, the ampersand and sign. Um, and ampersand, the idea, right? ampersand, yeah, the and sign. Um, okay. 
Yeah, and oh, yeah, that doesn't sound familiar. I'll look it up later. <laughs> Um, so the idea is that it's a both and it can be both good and hard and we can't just as parents or as people sending folks overseas, we can't just look at the good or just focus on the hard. We have to realize that it's a package deal and realize that the good, the amazing benefits of the TCK life can only come when paired with the hard. We only get our adaptability because we've moved around so much and we only get our capacity for empathy because we have gone through grief and loss ourselves. And there are so many amazing TCK attributes, but they couldn't be there if we hadn't gone through the hard pieces as well. So that's a, a significant part of the TCK experience that I think uh, needs to continue to be reiterated, that it is good and hard and that that's okay for it to be both. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, Lauren, you are yourself a mother. I believe you have two kids, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Two little okay. girls, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So with how prevalent social media is, the thing is, is that if you, social media itself is a tool. So however, nowadays people use it in order to make money. I mean, at the end mm -hmm. of the day, it's nothing wrong with that. However, a lot of the thing that when is being portrayed in social media of course the best most positive image that you can have however at, as a result also this also might lead to a double edge double edge effect for mm -hmm. one thing is that there's a term that predominantly called the diplomats so basically mm -hmm. they are children of diplomats and the thing is is that what people might not know is that for one thing is being a, a diplomat in another country especially if they come they are living in a developed country the diplomats might receive a certain form of benefits and entitlement for one thing is well uh caretakers at home or even maybe luxurious vehicles to bring them around so mm -hmm. as, as a result when they post this kind of image and then well at a young age you don't really put a filter on yourself they with an unnecessarily negative image of a TCK without understanding that TCK doesn't just always live this kind of lifestyle. There mm -hmm. are TCKs who has actually lived in what people may consider poverty. Mm -hmm. And there are those who has actually grown up through hardship. So this created an unfair image of a TCK. And well, as a result, this actually gives, a, in a sense, a negative publicity. So mm -hmm. how do you feel that the younger generation, especially a young TCK, could be educated, be more social, to be more responsible on social media. Yeah, I think that I think that is a really interesting conversation. I I think a big part of it is just getting to know TCKs and getting to know all of the the beautiful variety of TCKs, and it's really easy to put populations in a box when you're not very familiar with them or you don't have a lot of experience. And we do that with cultural groups all the time. Monocultural individuals will put different cultural groups and say they're all like this. Well, no, they're not. You just don't know very many of them. And I think the same goes for TCKs, that when you don't know TCKs and you don't have meaningful relationships with them, then it is easy for people to assume things that aren't true. This is definitely something with, that I struggled with um, in university, especially. I, I stopped telling people that I had grown up in Africa because people felt like I was showing off or I was trying to sound cool or I don't know what they were thinking, but it seemed to- I'm come only worried more is they didn't ask you something like, why are you, uh, your skin tone is not- that particular one. Right? I did have one person ask how I spoke English so well. <laughs> Some <And> I, <laughs> South Africans speak English and in fact they are a very decent speaker. In fact they speak French, right? If I'm not mistaken, at some part? In some parts, yeah. In some yeah. parts. Yeah. But the 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 point is that people have assumptions because they don't understand your lifestyle. They don't understand the the cross cultural life. And so it's easy for them to assume that you are a certain way because of your experience when really if they got to know you that is not the case and i think that's a detriment of social media is you can think that you get to know somebody through social media when really you're only getting to know the social media version and that's not always 
who they are. It's just a portrayal of who they are. Um, so relationship yeah. I think is the answer. <laughs> Uh, I can I can agree with that. I think the thing is is that uh, people tend to assume like let's say maybe we have my water container here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry, it's so big. I I am going to be in front of the camera for quite a bit today, so I need a lot of water. <laughs> so when people look at a water container, they will assume it's glass half empty, glass half full. Why didn't you actually ask the person who fill up the water? the container itself, what is it? Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, is that when people always assume in the first seven to 15 seconds of knowing somebody is that, hey, uh, this is what I know and this is what I see you as, but I didn't try to understand you. So mm -hmm. as a result, this create an unnecessary tension. And well, I think this is something that we can learn as a society today. So, okay. Uh, did I summarize that correctly? Or no. yeah, is there anything good. you wish to I love your water bottle analogy. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm trying to create an article on that. I'm so sorry I don't have the time yet at the moment, but I will get on to it. I think after the following two episodes, we are on episode 48 now. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Lauren. So right now is that we are in the midst of the corona epidemic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot of people are stuck at home. So, well, we can't really do much about it. Mm -hmm. But one thing has been really saddened me so far is because of now they are using this, this epidemic, in a sense, as an excuse to be xenophobic for individual to make it as an excuse to attack the minority races. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say any particular name. I'm not even going to say any particular nation leader who actually encourage, in a sense, for this to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, what would you, being a mother to two daughters yourself, right? So what do you feel is something that can be taught for those who grow up into believing only a certain form of media or representation to actually stop for at least the first few seconds, actually get to know somebody as who they are instead of just what they have seen or what they believe in? Yeah, that's a, a great question. I think that it's really important that we're uh, taking in information from a lot of different uh, places. And by that, I mean a lot of different cultures. I think sometimes we assume, and this is one thing that I feel TCKs have a lot to offer in, is that we assume if we're monocultural individuals that our country has the best information on anything at all times. When as TCKs, we know that there's a lot of great information coming from all over the world. And there's a lot of uh, really great things that other governments are doing and other places are doing. And it's really important, not that we're taking all of that and saying it's all true, but that we're at least bringing that into the conversation and realizing that perhaps there's more than one uh, say about different things. Um, so I think in this coronavirus situation, perhaps looking around the world and seeing what everybody else is doing can be a really great learning experience uh, for for our country, for our people. And that's a, a very important thing. And it also increases our uh, trust oftentimes of other people, people of different cultures. I think a lot of uh, xenophobia, like you were saying, often comes down to fear that we we fear things that we don't know. We fear things that we don't understand. And so when we don't know, and we under, don't understand and we're not seeking to know and seeking to understand, then it's just going to create barriers. And that's never healthy. Indeed. indeed. I actually like what you said. OK, <laughs> so uh, this is actually a question that I think among uh, just to, I'm just going to be honest with my audience here. So I tend to recycle some questions. It's not because I'm lazy to come up with the question, but <laughs> everybody have different stories. So as a result, even if you did ask a certain question, there will be a different answer to it. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm 
lazy to it, but yeah. <laughs> and also it helps save time. Come on, man. I can't I can't keep do I can't keep on coming up with every different question every single time, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is actually something I discovered when I was reading Wikipedia. Uh it's a apparently the concept for Barney the dinosaur, the weird purple dinosaur thingy was actually created was because uh, the creator actually was observing their kid, uh, observing her kids on what they love, and as a result, it inspired them. In fact, a lot of children's cartoon is actually inspired from watching their toddlers. So for yourself, you are this is well consulting TCKs, especially the parents of a TCK, mm -hmm. to actually well to actually cope with raising them. Uh, for yourself, right? My question is this, if you can create a program, maybe a TV shows, movies, or books to promote cultural di diversity, mm. what would it be? I think that uh, in, a, in a broad sense, having things, whether it's a, a TV show or books or anything that doesn't just bring in different colors, which we're getting yep. better about, but often it's all about the, the colors of the people and less about their actual culture and the things that make their culture unique. And so I think uh, bringing in pieces of, of cultural diversity that go deep into the culture and show the different ways that people express their values and beliefs and ideas and just opening that up to, to kids and saying, look, there's there's more than one right way to do things. There is more than one right way to show respect and that can look different in different places and that's okay. And communicating those things to kids. And I think that sometimes we don't think that kids can understand that. Um, but having worked with lots of kids who are about to move overseas and, and trained them, they can. They can learn that there are different ways of seeing the world. There are different right ways of doing things. And it's OK for it to be diverse and different. And it doesn't have to all look like the, the way that it does around you. But the flip side of that is that it is also OK that it looks like how it does in your culture as well. So we're not saying we're looking to other cultures as if they're they're better and we're worse or that we're better and they're worse, but just saying there's multiple ways of doing life that are good and it's okay to have that diversity. Okay. Okay. That's a lovely answer. Okay. Uh, so uh, earlier I mentioned, yeah, uh, regarding one of the effects of Corona is of course we are stuck at home now. So one of the trend that I will definitely, we will definitely be seeing is the rise in entrepreneurship. It's because, well, now people, one of the main silver lining, or in fact, the only silver lining now is people are spending time at home because they have no choice. They have to be home and well, uh, I'm not, I'm not yet one myself, but I know the thing is, is that, well, a lot of times, most of the child raising goes to the mom. So. Mm -hmm. As a result, yeah, uh, shout out to all the mothers everywhere. So the thing is, is that now the father has no choice. He has to spend time with his kids. Mm -hmm. So this is, I think it goes both ways, but I am hoping to lean it more towards the positive side. For one thing now, they, they realize, hey, I am always away now. Now I can spend time with my kids. I can, mm -hmm. I can be there for them in person. Yeah. yeah. So... What do you think in the future is could be considered for should be considered sorry for a multicultural environment? What do you think are like, like for example, uh, what kind of environment needs to be created? Because one of the downsides of being TCK, I guess, is that we can't stick to a traditional company. We can't have a certain mindset that it has then been done this way. We have to follow it this way. We need to be innovative. But the thing is, is that not every single company, or in fact, most most countries that's still developing, do not have the capacity to do it yet. Or in fact, they have the mindset of refusing to adopt this mindset. Yeah. So, Lauren, uh, pass it back to you. Yeah. So I think a big thing there that applies both to what you're saying with entrepreneurship in the workplace and um, even to to just being stuck at home is that TCKs have this need for change, which often comes through an innovation. So that's a great benefit to the need for change is that we innovate and we're creative <laughs> and we do a variety of different things. 
Um, but thinking about that preventive and proactive care, we need to figure out how to manage that need for change in a healthy way, which is something that I think people right now and in the future, as we're unable to travel for a while, we're going to have to learn how to do well. And we're going to have to figure out how to satisfy our need for change in healthy ways. And so some really simple ideas for that are just rearranging the furniture or repainting a wall or taking a walk around a different place that you, than you've been before. But you have to find really creative and healthy. We don't want to go to unhealthy directions, but healthy ways of satisfying our need for change that would usually be satisfied in the TCK community through travel and through interacting with lots of different people and diverse cultures and that sort of thing. If that's not being satisfied in this season, which it isn't for most people, then they're going to have to figure out how to satisfy and realize that it's okay that that need is there. We're not trying to, to eliminate it, um, but we have to find good ways to satisfy that need for change instead of hopping on an airplane because we can't right now. Okay, uh, for a note to what Lauren mentioned earlier, if you are interested to create something like what I did, because I'm practically inviting people of multiple countries to come to my show, <laughs> but well, without actually ever being there and learning about their culture, yeah, if you're ever interested, uh, there's a $10 credit for StreamYard that is attached in the description box. If you're ever interested to explore, on this and if you're especially if you're a tck yourself please do so and uh, the link is in the description box uh, do check it out after the end of the broadcast okay uh so okay so sorry back to lauren again uh okay for yourself right what do you think has been the ultimate blessing and at the same time this is actually a term from one of my fans actually uh she actually watched the show her name is phoebe so she actually she actually mentioned being a TCK kind of in a sense is a curse to her. It's because, uh, yeah, she grew up, she is from South Korea. The thing is, is that she grew up outside of a country, of course, in countries which has a lot more laid back, a lot less traditional mindsets, like, for example, the Philippines, Australia. So when she's back to South Korea, which is a developed country with a highly industrial mindset, but at the same time still stick to tradition, it became a counterculture headache for her. So for yourself, Lauren, what has been the ultimate blessing and at the same time a curse as a TCK? Oh man, yeah, I, <laughs> I, so. If my question is easy, everybody would have done it. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, no, it's a great question. And I think I, I often describe being a TCK as being like a fish, <laughs> which sounds silly, but um, it's like okay. being, <laughs> it's okay, like, being, I know of the chameleon, but I don't know the fish. <laughs> well, yep. Now, now, you know, I created the fish. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so like a fish and there's a, you know, how schools of fish, they swim together really well and they all know exactly which direction to go at the right point in time. And anybody looking would see that they're all swimming perfectly together. Well, a TCK yep. is never really a part of a school of fish. They never intuitively know in any place how to swim perfectly with the group, but they're really good at looking like they know how to. And so an onlooker may see that fish and think it's part of the group, but really they don't see the energy that goes into sticking with the group and, and thinking, oh, we gotta go this way. Oh, we're going this way. Oh, we're going that way. And it's that, that adaptability that we're really great at. We're really great at looking like we play the part and know what we're doing in any cultural environment when really it's taking so much energy um, and even sometimes anxiety to try to stick with the crowd. And so one of the biggest uh, struggles for me as a TCK, especially through high school and college and even some years after college, um, was not feeling like I was ever completely a part of the group and feeling like I should be. So constantly thinking, okay, what do I need to do so that nobody knows that I don't really know how to, to stick with this crowd? What do I need to do to, to play the part and make it look like I know exactly what I'm doing and I can swim with the fish and look like I'm part of the group? Um, and that created a lot of a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety. And it also 
created a sense of feeling like no one actually knows me. They just know what I'm showing them so that I'm sticking with the group. And that was a, something that I really needed to learn to undo. So that is the the curse part if we're, if we're calling it that. And the flip side of that though, is that TCKs have so many different layers to their identity. And one thing that's really neat is when you meet older adult TCKs who have realized that it's okay if they're not always swimming with the group of fish. And it's okay if they're a little bit different and if they have parts of their identity that they let show even in their their passport country. If they're in their passport country and they're a TCK from Africa like I am, it's okay to have little pieces of you that are still African and to bring in your African art into your house or things like that instead of feeling like, um, I remember there was a, a season where I felt like my house has to look like an American house. I need to learn how to decorate like an American. And I didn't like how it looked. I wanted to bring in my Africa yeah. stuff, but I hid it all because I didn't want that to influence how people saw me or anything like that. And so it is hard when you're in that season, but it becomes really beautiful and a blessing of being a TCK when you can show all of those different layers and then find that people really love you and love all of those different layers that they're not hoping that you're just showing them one part. So. All right. Okay. Do you feel that a TCK should ever settle down or be able to settle down or should, and they should be encouraged to do so? Because the yeah. thing is, is that you are the fourth TCK that I have in my show that actually is married. Mm -hmm. So as a result, well, uh, your husband and your daughters, they are your anchor. You have to be there, right? Yeah. But at the same time, being a TCK growing up, the thing is, is that we have never been able to feel settled in one yeah. place. So do you think there's a need for it to be quenched or actually in a sense, you have to be allowed to express it or in order to, uh, in order for you to, well, uh, yeah, I'll just pass it back to you for now. Yeah, that's a great question. And that's something that I talk a lot about in my book. And for each of the TCK challenges that I write about, I give the, the healthy TCK version. So in regards to this idea of restlessness and not feeling like you can settle, I say, and I feel it's really important to realize that healthy TCKs have to learn how to settle in the necessary areas. They can't let their need for change control them. And it's when it's controlling them and creating unhealthy patterns that it's not a good thing. So for example, if a TCK has chosen to get married and have kids and they continue to be restless in ways that aren't healthy for those relationships, that that becomes unhealthy. That creates a lot of destruction for TCKs and, and their families. Um, and in those situations, it's also the flip side of it is also important, like I was saying, to find ways to allow that piece of you that doesn't want to be settled to be satisfied. Because what happens is if you just ignore it and you try to push it down, it's going to come out eventually. And you're going to either be really resentful to those people, your family who are keeping you in one place, you're gonna be really resentful um, or you're just going to get on a plane and go somewhere randomly because you have to get out of the country. Um, and so if you don't satisfy it and if you're not aware of a lot of really serious issues and so being aware and thinking through how can I satisfy this this restlessness and this need for change in a healthy way is really important. Um, for TCKs who are not yet married and don't have kids and they don't have that piece of them that is needing to be anchored for those reasons, it's really important for them to be thinking about why. Why are you feeling restless? Why are you feeling unsettled? And why do you feel like you can't settle down somewhere? And for some, not all, but a lot of the, the TCKs that I work with, it comes down to feeling like if they settle, they're giving up something. If they settle, they're not enough of a TCK or they're giving up a piece of their TCK identity or they're giving up this restless part of them that they actually really like. And 
it is okay to have that part be a piece of you, but if that's what's controlling you your whole life, you have to figure out how to put it in its own box and be in control. Of it. So it's not going away, it's just in its own place and you get to, to pull it out and use it when it's healthy and helpful to you, but not feel like it's always in control of your life. Okay, yeah, I think if I can add on to that, the thing is, is that you just don't want to feel as though is that who you were in the past, what you yeah. feel has shaped you, what you love about yourself, you have to get rid of it. No, there's no such that you don't have to get rid of your identity as a TCK, but don't let it be the one that defines who you are as a person individually because, well, every place has its ups and downs. That's what you learn from it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, am I right to say that? Yeah, absolutely. And like we were talking about earlier, the TCK has so many layers to their identity and the TCK piece of that identity is just one layer. And for some TCKs, especially in adulthood, when they feel like they have to, to grasp onto their TCK identity or they're gonna lose it, that's when that TCK piece takes over and ends up controlling their life when really it's just a part of their identity and they need to let the other pieces of their identity come forward a bit too. Okay. All right, uh, Lauren, this is going to be my last question, yeah? So do you have any advice or books, uh, aside from your own books, of course, mm -hmm. that a TCK could, could look to if they are now... For, okay, this is something that I noticed. A lot of TCKs tend to focus on a career which mm -hmm. has a lot more mission base or a lot more, a lot more career that is more towards a purpose fulfillment mm -hmm. as compared to those of monetary seeking for one thing, even though, well, money is important, of course. But the thing is, is that they have been in a position whereby they have seen that money doesn't mean happiness. So as a result, they lean towards these sorts of career more. Mm -hmm. And along with that, those in a dilemma now, because for one thing is that uh, this is quite common, I guess, among Asian parents, <laughs> is that they are guilt-ridden to stay with uh, with, with their guilt ridden to stay, which in a sense is a counter clash with what a TCK has been. So yeah, uh, Lauren? Yeah, so I think you were asking what books are resources for yeah. TCKs. And yes, aside from yours, aside from yours. <laughs> oh, yeah, course, yeah. Uh, aside from mine, um, Misunderstood by Tanya Crossman is a great one because it's full of statistics. And I think it's really helpful for anyone, so parents of TCKs and people from different organizations and that sort of thing, um, but also for TCKs themselves, because you really start to find yourself in those statistics and realize, wow, I'm not as different in all of these areas as I thought, or I didn't realize how prevalent this is in the TCK world. So that book, um, Misunderstood, is great. And then another one that I love is called Between Worlds by Marilyn Gardner. And it's a, it's a narrative, so she writes from her own experience, and she's a now an older adult TCK. And it is just really great, especially for the, the topic of settling. Um, she's done a lot of, of settling into different places and then unsettling. <laughs> um, but she talks a lot about how that, that scariness of settling somewhere um, it's that it's okay to do. It's okay to settle in and it's okay to um, to let yourself be all in in a place that it isn't an un-TCK thing to do, but that you can be a TCK and settle in healthy ways. So that book, Between Worlds by Marilyn Gardner, is a great one. All right. Uh, sorry, yeah, if I may rectify one part, it's in addition to Lauren's book. Yeah, it's not that, it's not that Lauren's book will not assist you guys, but the thing is, is that it's always good to have more resources because okay. the thing is, is that nobody is perfect, right? I mean, everybody have a different experience, even as a TCK ourselves. Maybe we do share some common issues. For one thing is we have a cultural identity issue. But the thing is, is that uh, it's always good that we have multiple resources to settle to. Okay. So, yeah, this is actually the end of episode 48 so i need to thank ben who actually leave a light so ben is actually uh my past guest both he and his brothers both he and his brother has been on my show and well they have been really supportive of what i've been doing so 
along with that yeah i actually leave some leave some referral code for you guys for example Streamyard. so if you guys are tck's and you guys are now interested to well meet other people and of course to create you can do it like what i'm doing right now uh, Streamyard will give you guys a ten dollars promotion code so yeah do check it out so along with that uh yeah i lauren is there anything you you wish to say i don't think so thank you so much for having me this has been great you're most welcome okay so uh, that's the end of global citizens episode 48 so i need to thank lauren of course for um, for giving her time to come to the show uh hope this covid 19 is, is gonna pass soon and well we all can move on with our lives and with that i'll see you guys bye <laughs>